The October 24th shootout with fleeing felon Timothy Thomas probably marks one of the most violent and heroic moments in the Monroe County Sheriff Department's recent history. Sheriff Rick Ramsey was quoted by local media saying the deputies did exactly what they were trained to do. Deputies, he reportedly said, did the job perfectly. Yet, in spite of the well-deserved celebration of Deputy Gordon as a local hero, Blue Paper reporters heard from a family who had a very different perspective. This is the location of the shootout. The car was just next to this stop sign. On the other side of those bushes, the Alfonso family residence. On the night of October 24th, at the time of the shooting, they were outside celebrating their 16-year-old daughter's birthday, five family members and their two dogs. You see them at the side of the house in this surveillance video. Thomas stood almost exactly between Deputy Gordon and the Alfonso's when a barrage of bullets began flying in their direction. Whether the job was perfect or not, a few things are certain. Deputy Gordon almost didn't get to go home to his family that night. He was saved by his bulletproof vest when he was shot in the chest by Thomas. According to Tony Alfonso, nothing short of a miracle saved his family. And cop shooter Timothy Thomas got away. So must residents faithfully accept that they could fall as collateral damage during any violent felony arrest taking place on our streets? Or are there some policing practices that are meant to avoid such an exorbitant contingency? This type of stop is called a felony traffic stop. In the video, it is clear that the deputy steps out of his patrol car into the open to approach the suspect, and he does so before backup arrives on scene just seconds later. Under Monroe County Sheriff's Office policies, the deputy will exit the patrol vehicle quickly but remain behind the door and accessible to the public address system microphone. The deputy shall not leave a position of cover to approach a felon's vehicle until assistance has arrived on scene. Commercial 5-Boy 21052. Here is a police training video showing officers how to conduct a felony traffic stop. The goal is to overwhelm the suspect with the number of officers while maintaining defensive cover, leaving the suspect with no hope that he could prevail in a shootout. This method protects both the officers and the public. Sheriff Ramsey told the Blue Paper that strict adherence to the policy is left to the discretion of the officer who must make split-second decisions. He said he doesn't know why Deputy Gordon chose not to wait for backup and to move into the open. Because the incident is currently under FDLE investigation, the sheriff is prohibited from questioning the deputy on this issue. The sheriff did say that Gordon may have been trying to move into a position that would afford him a better view of the suspect. We leave you with this interesting vintage 1973 police felony traffic stop training.
There's no need to repeat grim statistics. The police officer knows his chances for survival have narrowed. To defeat these increasing odds, it is up to the individual officer and his department to prepare. Prepare literally for survival. One Adam, silent alarm, bank of A Levy, fifth and A Adam. Unit two Adam and three Adam, back up one Adam. One Adam, ten four. The approach is critical. Now, training and experience will tell. is dead. Why? Very simply, he wasn't prepared. Let's take it back to when the officer received the call and see what he could have done and survived. from the east on B Street, three Adams from the south on Oxnard Boulevard. ETA approximately three minutes. Notice the officer does not rush in blindly. He takes a position where he can observe the scene in relative safety. From this vantage point, he can analyze the situation and determine the best apprehension procedure. He observes a possible lookout standing near the door and a possible getaway car with a driver, plus he notes the number of pedestrians, which makes an immediate confrontation most hazardous. The officer knows he must make a cautious approach. A gunfight on the street is out of the question. The officer immediately notifies communications of his exact location, description of suspects, their vehicle, and what direction they are headed. The officer makes a wise decision. He allows the suspects to leave the bank. The safety of the people is his prime concern at this point. All units have been notified by the dispatcher and the officer follows the suspects. He keeps a safe and discreet distance while reporting speed and direction. He has a difficult decision to make. Where does he make the stop? He must take into consideration a list of factors such as time of day, location of backup units, geographical area, population density, lighting, traffic, and the possibility of having to go in pursuit. He cannot wait too long. The backup units are in constant touch with communications. Once they've received instructions from 1A, they proceed to close in. The officer must be prepared in advance for immediate action prior to the stop. He releases his shotgun, places the public address mic on the floorboard, and has the radio mic on the seat. The location for the stop has been selected by 1A and communications notified. He uses the red lights and siren at the right time. In close, it surprises and gives the officer a psychological edge. Unable to react, the suspect stop. Note the position and angle of the police vehicle. Once the officer is in position, he takes total command of the situation. His physical advantage is his placement behind the door with the engine block between him and the suspect's vehicle. From this vantage position, he can take offensive action if necessary, yet is as protected as possible. He commands them to place their hands, palms up, on the dash. Suspects in the rear, hands on the back of the front seat. Driver very slowly turns off the engine and drops the keys out the window. The officer should not attempt the arrest alone. As the backup units arrive, they will work as a well-trained team with a second officer automatically covering the arresting officer. When the backup officer is in position, the suspects are ordered from their vehicle by the arresting officer. 
all suspects should be ordered to exit from the same side of the vehicle, allowing for the best observation and minimize escape opportunities. The arresting officer instructs the suspects out in this specific order. First, the man in the right front or passenger side. Backup officer has a clear field of fire using the trunk of unit 1A as cover. The driver is ordered out and assumes the same positioning to the left of the first suspect. It is important to get the driver out quickly since there is always a possibility that he might have a second set of keys. The arresting officer commands the suspect to sink to his knees and then assume a prone position. Now the suspect in the right rear is instructed to follow suit. He is told to face left. This way, the suspects cannot see one another as they are handcuffed. The arresting officer verbally controls the suspects. The last man to be removed is the suspect sitting in the left rear. The arresting officer checks the suspect vehicle carefully to ensure additional suspects might be hidden from view. The vehicle will be thoroughly searched after the suspects are handcuffed. Sufficient assistance has arrived to allow movement. The arresting officer takes the handcuffs from the first backup officer and moves into a control position to begin handcuffing and initial physical searching. He will continue to maintain command of the situation until suspects are ready for transport. Handcuffing will be in a right to left sequence. Utilizing this procedure, the suspects cannot see what is happening. This is another factor in keeping a suspect physically and psychologically off balance. Notice the arresting officer cuffs the hands behind the back. Always handcuff a suspect behind the back, never in front where he or she can manipulate their hands. When cuffing, also make sure the cuffs are double locked. After handcuffing, the arresting officer makes a cursory check for weapons. Though a more thorough search will be made before the suspect is placed in the patrol unit for transportation, this initial search must be made. Notice the search pays off as handguns are found. Note also that the arresting officer places the found weapons in his waistband where he can keep control of the weapon plus maintaining the chain of evidence. Note how the officer maintains physical control. Each suspect is searched again. This is most important. Too many officers have been killed by a suspect who was thought to be clean. Using established procedures, the apprehension is completed with a minimum of danger. Four felony suspects have been arrested by a single well-trained officer using sound techniques and a team approach. Let's look back at the operation and stress the vital factors. The officers utilized every advantage possible, both physical and psychological. They were cool. They did not rush headlong into the situation. They did not play hero. Too many brave but foolish and untrained officers have died by exposing themselves unnecessarily. Remember these points. Be prepared. The suspects have done their homework and are prepared. Are you? Approach a potentially dangerous situation with extreme caution. Observe, diagnose, and plan. Plan your action, and when possible, develop pre-planning so that preliminaries are reflexive actions on your part when rolling on a particular felony call. Always park your vehicle so it offers the most protection and concealment for yourself. When possible, utilize your shotgun. It is a far better weapon than your handgun for most situations, both ballistically and psychologically. Remember your radio. It is your lifeline to your station and supporting units. Note how the arresting officer utilizes the cuffs of the backup officers. Learn to work as a team in backup situations. Never take anything for granted. Always search a suspect thoroughly. With proper and frequent training, the odds in the street against the individual officer can be narrowed, but it depends on the department, and above all, it depends on you, the individual officer.
This officer survived because he knew his job and performed it well. He can go home with a deserved feeling of accomplishment in knowing he has again served and protected his community.